Thank you for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife. <laughs> um, so like she said, I've actually been working with the WordPress a little over a decade, but my bio needs to be updated. Um, I work at Web Developer for Image in a Box, which is a digital marketing agency in Huntsville. Um, yeah. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter, at JacobMCDev. I actually just tweeted out some slides, um, if anybody wants those. There's also a link at the end, but you know, who wants to write down links? Um, so real quick, how many people know what Gutenberg is? No one's like, what's this? Okay, most, kind of half and half. How many people have actually used it? via demo or on your site. Okay, just a couple. Awesome. So this is a 101 class, fundamentals, basics, you know, the gist. Um, I actually really kind of missed an opportunity when I named the talk. I realized after I'd submitted it and it got accepted, there was a much better name. So we're going to print it in like this never happened. And the real name is Guten Tag Gutenberg, right? <laughs> Yeah? All right. So welcome to Guten Tag Gutenberg. Um, we're going to be going over the Gutenberg user interface, some very basic stuff, look at what it looks like, some of the current features, including blocks and some other things. Um, we'll look at a little bit of Gutenberg in the wild, not a whole lot, but some, some things that are being done with it and some things you can already utilize. Um, and then we'll talk about how to prepare your website for Gutenberg. Very cursory stuff, don't get too excited. Um, it's all just pretty basic. So the first thing we'll look at is the Gutenberg UI. Title slides, right? Um, and the WordPress we all know and love. This is the, what is now being dubbed, if you're not aware, as the classic editor, because post Gutenberg, we have two things now, the classic editor and the Gutenberg editor. Um, this is the WordPress editor everybody knows. You should all be familiar with it, I would assume. Um, it's really basic, we'll go over it just for the sake of comparison. You've got your post title field at the top, you enter stuff in, that's the title of your post. Really advanced stuff. Um, below that you've got your content where you'll type in your content, you have your little buttons for formatting, um, your add media button to add images and stuff. Over on the right, you've got your publish box, categories, tags, featured image, and if you have plugins enabled, which you most likely do, you will most likely have other boxes floating around somewhere. It's all basic, we're all familiar with it for the most part. Um, and this is where we've been, and this is where we're going. This is the Gutenberg editor. It looks kind of sleek, you know, a little fancy. It looks like there's a lot less going on. There's actually a lot more going on, it just kind of is packaged better. Um, we'll start you know, in the top left again, you've got this little, it might be hard to see, I don't know, can everybody see it pretty well in detail? All right, you've got this plus button where you can add blocks, and we'll talk about that later and talk about blocks, so don't get too excited, hold on. Um, we've got these fancy little arrows, which are actually undo and redo buttons. Yeah, I mean, come on. And those didn't really work that great a few versions ago, but now they work awesome, so don't be too scared. Um, then we've got this little eye icon for document information, we'll talk about that pretty in depth. Um, in the middle, you've got your add title button, or add title field, which is the exact same thing as the post title field. It's not different at all. Um, it just looks a little different, so don't get too scared. Below that, you'll see this little prompt to write your story. This is where you will, <laughs> where you'll add blocks and whatnot. Um, you can add paragraphs and all kinds of stuff, and we'll talk about that more. Um, don't get too excited, calm down. Over on the right, way over here, I need a pointer, I don't have one. But we've got, it's kind of grayed out so it's kind of hard to see, we've got pre preview and publish buttons in the top. Um, so it's a little different than the classic editor. We've got a little gearbox, all that does is toggle the settings pane, it's not really that important. Um, and then some dots that lead to another menu where you can look at code or copy all the content, which are kind of cool, but not really pertinent to what we're talking about. Um, and then, We've got the settings pane, which looks really different, but is really similar. Um, at the top, you've got your status and visibility, just like you do in your publish box. You have um, a little stick to the front page, which just makes it a sticky post, in case vernacular is confusing. Um, pending review just sets it as a pending review status. It's really not difficult. 
but we've got categories, we've got tags, featured image. It, it's all there. It just looks a little different. All these things are also collapsible, much like they are in the current UI. A lot of people don't know that those are collapsible, but they are. Um, and it's all pretty standard stuff. Nothing's too crazy. So we're going to talk about now what everybody wants to talk about. Those are blocks and features. Because these are the things that are really different. Um, they don't just look different, they're very much different. Gutenberg blocks, this is what a post will look like that has blocks in it already. Um, these are just a sample post thing. We've got a cover image, which is new. It's not something you really did before. Um, we've got headings, which are typical paragraphs. Images below that. My screen was too small to get a whole lot of them in there, but there it is. Um, and this is kind of what Gutenberg starts to look like. WordPress now is more visual, um, whereas used to, um, we don't have a good example. I don't have a good example of it, but our posts were really just text and short codes, and maybe some images, but mostly just text and short codes. And it was really hard to move stuff around because you know you'd have to cut and paste text, or you'd have to move images. And images are really hard to align if you're not used to it. Um, you might have to add special classes, so you might need to know some HTML or some CSS. Um, but with Gutenberg, we don't really need all that. We just drag blocks over. They have settings, we set them. If you don't like where it is, you just move it. It's fine. You don't have to copy, you don't have to paste. It's really, um, what's the word? Intuitive. It's very simplistic. Um, it works the way you would expect it to most of the time. There's still bugs, it is new technology. But for the most part, it's pretty polished. And for what most people use it for, it's good out the gate. Um, and what's really important in Gutenberg, I think, two things that really make a difference. No more short codes, right? Has anybody ever typed a really long, all the power went out. <laughs> Has anybody ever typed a really long short code and been confused? I don't know what happened. Yeah. So what do we do? Sure. Well, um, it really depends. It really depends. Um, right, and we might talk more about that towards the end, and we kind of go over that a little bit. Maybe. Uh, Nathan. Because you know, that conference is at a tech glitch. Right. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Well, we blinked, and it still was exactly. Who blinked? Which one of you blinked? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Here's a question. Yeah. Why do you have to unplug the impression I think I'm back. It's a little darker, but I'm back. We'll get there. Look at this. Technology. Um, so anyways, yeah, no more short codes. I don't know if you've ever written a really long short code with a bunch of parameters and stuff. They're a pain. You don't want to do it. So now you don't have to most of the time. Um, and we also can now do things like save blocks. You can take some of these settings and say you have a call to action kind of thing, like you've got a nice little text with a button and it looks all pretty and you don't want to have to remake that on every single page. You can save it and just reuse it. It's awesome. Moving on. These are all the blocks that are available. There's a lot and we're not going to talk about all of them. I'm sorry, but there's a lot. Um, some of the ones to note. I mean, if you, if you look over the list, we've got headings and subheadings and images and pull quotes and verses because we write poetry on the internet a lot, buttons and uh, all this stuff. Some ones I want to point out is the classic block, um, which is just the classic editor in block form. And this is mainly just used as far as, I, the only use case I can really find for it. When you load a post that's not Gutenberg into Gutenberg, it puts everything in the classic block. So it's there for you still and it's still compatible. And then you can take stuff out of that and move it around. But it's basically just the old WordPress editor in a block. Um, we have tables now, which are really cool, because I don't know if you ever try to put a table on a page in WordPress. It's not fun at all. I have done it. Don't recommend it. Um, we have columns, which are in beta, and they have been forever, and I don't know if they'll ever come out of beta. I'd assume they will. But all that does is mean you can put blocks next to each other. Right now, it's hit or miss. 
text works fine, images work fine. You put some of the more advanced blocks in there, I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, and then we have page breaks, which are really neat if you've ever written a really long blog post that is just really taxing to read. You can break it into pages. And you have a little pagination thing at the bottom, you know, page one, two, whatever. Um, one caveat about the page break, the way it does, I think I unplugged something now. We're good, okay. We're gonna get through this. Um, <laughs> The way, the way it does the page breaks is it'll do like your post URL slash to. Um, so honestly, I don't know how that affects SEO or if it affects SEO. Um, so you might wanna talk to somebody who knows more about SEO than I do about that, but that's how it works. But it is still neat. We have a thing for short codes. Um, I didn't put it up there, I think I forgot it. There is a block for short codes if you still want to use your short code or if you're using a plugin that hasn't developed an actual block yet. They will still work in Gutenberg um, and then we have embeds, because WordPress supports a whole lot of embeds. I think there's like 34 or something. Um, and now we have a block for each and every one, which you could just put it in an HTML block and it would still work, but we have a block for each and every one. So these are all the blocks. They're all pretty neat. Um, I haven't used any that have had a lot of problems other than the columns one. Um, but yeah. There's all the blocks. We're gonna look at block settings. And each of these is a different setting for a di or a settings pane for a different block. Um, but this is what the settings will look like. Um, some blocks will have settings on the actual block, but for the most part, for the vast majority, the settings are gonna be on the sidebar, or at least the same settings that are on the block are also in the sidebar. And we've got some interesting things. If you look at the paragraph, um, which is the first one here on the left, We've got text settings. You can automatically set your um, text, set it, text size to what has been dubbed small, medium, large, or extra large. Or you can toggle it with a slider, or you can enter it in by hand if you'd like to. Um, we have this drop cap option that's weird and you can make your first letter be bigger than the rest of your line. I don't understand it, but people like it. <laughs> um, we've got background colors and text colors. Um, and if you don't like what's there, you can select a custom color. We've got advanced tabs where you can add CSS classes. Um, and th these, I chose these blocks to use because they have a good sampling of all the fields that are available in settings. Um, under headings, on the heading block, which is the next one, you've got the H1 and H2 through H6. Um, those actually change the HTML element of the heading, as you would expect. There's alignment buttons. You can set an HTML anchor so you can put an ID on that tag and actually like navigate to it with a um, link. And then we've got cover images where you can change the fixed background. It's like a parallax type thing if you're familiar with that. Um, you can change the opacity with the background dimness. Um, and then over on the images, you can set alternate text and whatnot and different sizes. It's all um, really kind of standard to what we already do in WordPress but is a lot more difficult to do. And there are custom settings you can set where your theme can actually manipulate some of the options that are available to make your content editing experience stay within the bounds of your brand, or, your, or at least your theme settings. Um, but those are block settings, and it's really standard. Um, oh, and I didn't mention in the beginning, I meant to. They're in the same pane where the document settings were before. You'll notice at the top, the document and the block, you toggle between you can talk between the individual block settings or the entire post settings. So this is what block settings kind of look like. When you click it, it happens. You don't have to like, gone are the days of changing something, preview post. Changing something, preview post. Changing something, preview post. You can see it right there, which is kind of neat. Um, I have a lot of GIFs, by the way. None of them are funny, but they're all there. <laughs> And they can be helpful, I think. Um, moving on, this is how you add blocks in Gutenberg. We've got the plus symbol up there that I told you about earlier. It drops down um, and you have all these blocks available and you can search for blocks, which is really neat and really quick. Um, block developers can actually add tags to their blocks. So when you type in title, heading pops up. 
You don't have to search for the exact block name because you may not know the block name or not remember it. You just type what you want and there it is, assuming it's tagged correctly. Another way to add blocks is inline. You can actually put it in the content instead of going up to that menu. You can do it where you're editing um, and it works the exact same way. It's just in a different spot. Um, moving blocks is really easy. We have these fun arrow buttons that slide the blocks through the content real smooth. And the content moves around your block, so you're always looking where you're editing. It's not going off the screen. You have to scroll. Um, and it works really nice. I didn't really like it when we first got it, when I first looked at Gutenberg, but it's really been polished and works much, much better. There is another way to move blocks um, by dragging. You have to kind of grab in a really obscure area that's not obvious and jiggle it around to get it to go in the right place sometimes because it can be difficult. But they're working on it. See, so, you know, I was having trouble. <laughs> um, so moving the content around, and you kind of start to see how Gutenberg really makes things easier um, from like a layout standpoint. This is the document outline I mentioned before. It has some handy information that we've never really had in WordPress, um, such as word, word count, heading count, paragraph count, and for whatever reason, block count, if you really want to know how many blocks you've used. Um, but more importantly, it has this document outline, which you can actually use to navigate between your, con between your post. Um, if you're editing something, you want to go, oh, I want to edit the other section, you just open the document outline and jump to it, especially if it's a longer post, that can be helpful. Which that kind of leads us into some other features of Gutenberg that I'm really excited about um, and I think are really helpful and kind of where the WordPress community has been going a lot, especially the past couple of years, and that's accessibility. Um, the document outline, if you notice, this H4, it's all red and like stands out because that's not how you should nest your headings. They need to be one, two, three, you know, in a correct order for SEO purposes, but more importantly, for accessibility because a lot of people who use assistive devices to navigate your website, they do so via the headings. That's how text readers do it. Um, that's how other assistive devices do it. Um, they go through the heading. So it's really confusing. The, the technology can get confused whenever you put an H4 under an H2 without an H3 between because it really doesn't understand what you're trying to do there. And Gutenberg will tell you like, hey, that's not right. You should fix it because people use your site and you want them to be able to find things. Um, over here, we also have in the color selector, if you select two colors that don't have a very high contrast, um, as you noticed, I, I selected the red and the orange. Those are terrible together. Um, it'll tell you that the com color combination can be hard for people to read. Um, I appreciate that because I'm colorblind and I really hate when people put blue text on red backgrounds, but it happens more often than you would think. Um, but so with Gutenberg, we start to get some features that help us be more proactive in making sure that our sites are usable by people who may have special considerations that need to be made. So some other features we have are opt-in features, as they like to call them officially. And you gotta touch code for these, I'm sorry, but you do. You may need a developer to help you out. It's really basic though, if you've ever done anything with your functions.php file, you can drop these in, it's not difficult. Um, they've got default block styles, which for whatever reason aren't enabled by default. Which, I mean, it makes sense um, in a post-Gutenberg world, but in the transition, it's kind of really confusing. Um, so basically what that means is when you load Gutenberg on your site, none of the styling that Gutenberg provides would be provided. It will all be relied upon you or your theme to provide that styling. Um, and if you don't want to do all of that work, and you don't mind the default styling, you probably want to enable the default styling. Um, otherwise, it won't be there. They have wide alignments, which lets you set your content to a little bit wider than the content area or to full width of the content area. Um, those will need special CSS handlers in your own. Uh, I mean, it kind of works out of the box, but there's a good chance you're gonna have to edit CSS and make sure it works well with what you have. Um, block color palettes. Um, you can have your theme actually set the colors that are available to you to make sure that you don't use a blue that's slightly different than the blue, blue that you use everywhere else on your website. 
Um, you can have them disable custom colors so you don't have your content person go in and put red on a blue background or whatever. Um, I've not known anyone that did that. That wasn't a shout to anybody who may be in the audience. Um, <laughs> you can also do block font sizes so you can set custom font sizes. If your default font size for your site is at 18 pixels rather than 16, which is generally the norm, um, you can set a special font size to that um, so that whenever they you can click the small, medium, large, extra large, then you always use the same font size. And it's what you've determined and not what Gutenberg thinks you should use. Those are all, again, kind of advanced. Um, but there is, I did link to in the resources, a long post that uh, is the official WordPress documentation for it on how to do all these. And again, it's really simple, really easy, straightforward, especially if you know any CSS or PHP. Um, Moving on, we're going to look at a few examples of Gutenberg in the wild. Uh, first, the Atomics block, Atomic Blocks theme, which came out recently, um, and as far as I know, is the first theme in the WordPress repository that officially supports Gutenberg 100%. There might be others, um, but that's the first one that I saw because they do good marketing. Um, so this theme actually enables all the features that you saw before. Um, and it's, it's programmed to work really well with everything that Gutenberg provides. Um, and it's a good example to look at if you want to check out what other people are doing to make sure that you um, kind of do the same thing and, and can figure out those stuff. You get it. Ato Atomic Blocks Gutenberg Blocks Collection, which is a mouthful, um, adds a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of like the post builder type blocks. Very similar to like what you might find in Beaver Builder um, or one of the other ones, like Divi or something. I don't like Divi, but anyway. Post grid container, all those things. Um, share icons, call to actions, really standard stuff. Um, I haven't actually used it, but I've looked into it a little bit, and from what I can tell, it's really solid. There's a lot of good reviews about it, a lot of good write-ups on it. One that's kind of innovative is the Drop It plugin which is really neat, I think, and kind of a good example of where Gutenberg can take us. Um, it allows you, if you're familiar with unsplash.com, which is a, a website where you can get royalty-free photos, they're all high definition, and they're free to use on your site however you would like. Um, it lets you actually search the unsplash.com gallery in your post editor and drop them in there as you would like. So you don't have to go through unsplash, scroll through everything, it went away again. Um, you don't have to go through Unsplash and scroll through everything like you would normally and then download it, upload it to your media uh, folder, and then go that way. It's all right here in the editor, so it's very easy. Um, what? Batteries? One moment. I think anybody's know what we're doing. I think we're going. Can you find some delays? That's my guess. Okay. Yeah, I see your batteries are going through. Okay. Do you need batteries? Uh oh. I'll see what I can do. I'll be right back. Okay. You just want to talk for another two minutes? Yeah. Has anybody else had this much trouble? At all? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so I'll take the bullets. Nobody else has to. I'll try to talk loud so everybody can hear me. So this is a good example of what Gutenberg can do. Technologically speaking, it opens up a lot of possibilities for us that weren't really possible or at least were much more difficult before. Um, it's not going to be a lot different now, especially on a front end standpoint from like what your users will see. But the post editing experience is much different and will eventually, we hope, turn into what we'd like to, you know, like true front-end editing, where you can go to the front of your website, open the WordPress customizer, and it work like this. Um, kind of like what a lot of page builders do, but it has no batteries right now. I don't know. 
Hold on a second again. Everyone do the, the old one. They were good. Almost. That's okay. I can get it through. These are new. Oh, those are new. We just wanted to make sure that oh, okay. that was in fact Awesome. Are we good? Yep. Thank you. Hey, I'm back. All right, so, so some of the things that are down the line that we hope for Gutenberg are full front end editing, like I had mentioned, um, and also true post templates, meaning that your developer can program something to where when you open a post, all the information that you typically put in it is right there. So if it's something like a product review that you do and you always want the certain images and you want to keep the same headings, or headings in the same place or whatever, it can already be loaded there for you when you open the post. You don't have to go and pull in all the blocks again, all over again, um, and do it from scratch. And that's kind of where we're going with a lot of this. Um, so, preparing for Gutenberg. What should you do? You should get excited for, for, for one. Um, everything is kind of changing, and in a good way, I think. Um, there's a lot of critics out there for Gutenberg and a lot of critics for the way it's being handled, but at the end of the day, it's still coming, and it's still good as a piece of software. So I think we need to be excited about it um, and ready for it. So how can you get ready with your personal site? Well, number one, you need to be up to date on everything. You need to make sure your WordPress installation is up to date, which is a given. You should be doing that anyways for security reasons. Um, make sure that all your plugins are up to date. If you have any legacy plugins, things that aren't being maintained anymore or haven't been updated in a very long time, um, you might want to consider replacing them because one, it can be a security risk for you, um, and two, no one wants to use software that nobody's looking at anymore. There's, there's always bugs in software. They will always be there, and if nobody's maintaining your software, that means you're using software that has bugs that nobody's fixing. Um, and generally, there's always an alternative. <laughs> um, it's very rare that you'll find a plugin where there is no alternative for it. And if you do, maybe you should write one. I don't know. Um, number four, play with Gutenberg. Check it out. Look at it. Just get familiar with it. You don't have to commit to it yet. Um, there's a thing called Frontenberg out there. It kind of sounds weird. Um, but it just lets you play with Gutenberg on the front end. There's a couple of sites out there. Um, the official Gutenberg informational site for one on WordPress.org is a Gutenberg front end instance. You can go and you can read about Gutenberg while playing with it. Um, and then there's another one on uh, the WordPress VIP site, and I'll link to both of those. Um, but get out there and play with it, look at it. It's not that scary, especially once you mess around with it. You might even like it, who knows? Um, if you're looking to upgrade to it or to, to add it to your site, which I think you should consider, um, you want to set up a staging site or a local development site because you do not want to put it on your production site without having tested it. Um, the issue that a lot of people have with Gutenberg and the issue that is real with Gutenberg is that there are a lot of themes and plugins that have not updated or added compatibility with it. Um, you may use some of those. I don't know. It's, and that there's, there's some uh, argument for how short of a timeline Gutenberg has been stable versus how long plugin authors have had to update to it. Um, so you may want to wait a little while. If it's not compatible now, it will be in the future, hopefully. Um, but you want, to, you want to set up something local or something staging, um, which just means not your main site, uh, and test it. You want to make sure it's compatible with all your plugins. Test all your functionality. I am not telling you to go download it on your production site right now and have fun because I don't want to be responsible for anything that happens. <laughs> but once you have tested, once you have um, checked it out, made sure it's compatible, maybe updated your stuff, or added functionality that makes it compatible, you might need a developer for some of it if you have very customized platforms. Um, but once you've done all that, download it, use it. It's awesome. I use it on my site. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, in my job, I do a lot more development than I do content writing, and by a lot more, I mean 100% more. 
I don't do any content stuff. <laughs> um, and I really enjoy like playing with Gutenberg. I think it's really fun. There's a lot of uh, possibilities that exist with it that didn't exist before. Um, but yeah, so that's what you got to do. I, uh, there's a lot of stuff. I know the, the technical part of this is the staging or local development. A lot of hosts will set up staging sites for you. There's a lot of articles on how to do local development stuff. It's really not that scary. So just go do it. And here are some resources. Uh, all the plugins I mentioned, all the sites I mentioned are here. There's a link to slides, some down at the bottom. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Yeah. So, well, thank you. Sure, so the question is, uh, if you currently, to paraphrase, if you currently use a different kind of editing platform like a page builder, um, I assume is what you're talking about, um, should you switch to Gutenberg or stick with that? Um, what, what are you using, do you mind me asking? I use Divi. Divi? Um, I don't know about Divi specifically, whether they have added compatibility for it or not. I know Beaver Builder has added compatibility and I believe Visual Composer is working on it if they haven't already added it and I assume Divi probably is too. If you're already familiar with it, there's really no reason to switch unless it just gets to a point where they just stop supporting it, which I doubt. Huh? Initial support for Gutenberg and Divi is coming, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, all the page builders out there that are popular and being used and being maintained actively that have companies backing them know about Gutenberg for sure, and they're definitely making sure that they run work well on it. Um, Again, I don't think you should switch necessarily unless for some reason you just want to. I don't think that there's a need to really. Um, everything should still work fine. In fact, Gutenberg may enhance the way it works. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Good question. I, I meant to cover that. Um, the question was whether the classic editor will eventually be phased out or if it's always going to be optional. Um, the class classic editor has actually been added to the plugin repository as a plugin, just like Gutenberg currently is. Um, when Gutenberg eventually gets adapted into core, it'll be optional for a time. Um, and you'll still be able to use the classic editor. Eventually, the idea is to disable the classic editor in WordPress altogether. Um, but as long as that plugin is maintained, the classic editor should be available for the most part. I doubt that there will ever be any kind of attempt to make sure it does never work again. Um, so you could feasibly still run it. And I believe that, if I remember correctly, this is, um, don't, don't take my word for it, but I believe that they will still be maintaining a version of WordPress with the classic editor for several security releases after. Um, so if you don't want to update to 5.0, for instance, you could probably stay on 4.9, whatever, and still get security updates for a while. Eventually that will stop, but they'll have it for a while. Yeah. No, actually. Um, that's a good question. The theme support documents will actually tell you how to add theme support for Gutenberg to a theme. Um, like some of the optional features that I would mention with the default styles and all those, um, those that's where actually that you'll find that stuff. That's a good question. Um, most of them, if you're on like the plugin repository for instance, most of them will advertise that they work with Gutenberg. Um, but other than that, there's really not a good system right now. That, like you couldn't go and say at the moment that I know of Gutenberg compatibility, I want to see only those and see those. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Are you saying we should or should not install a Gutenberg plugin? Um, you <laughs> should not if you haven't tested it. If you have tested it and it works fine. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier. You set up a staging site or a local development site to test outside of your production site, which is a little more of a technical step. 
Um, and you could have a developer do it if you needed. You could, you could, but something might break. It's possible, I don't know. It depends on what plugins you're using. Um, you could check, go through all your plugins and check Gutenberg compatibility. Um, if you use a lot of really popular plugins or hot, like name brand plugins or whatever, um, <laughs> whatever that means, like, like uh, Yoast or Ninja Forms or Gravity Forms or WooCommerce, all of those are Gutenberg compatible for the most part. Does that answer your question? Okay, yep. So that will be based on what your theme styling is. Uh, as far as the default Gutenberg styling is, as far as I know, it's all mobile responsive. Um, I haven't tested everything out, so I couldn't tell you for sure. But it really depends on your theme styling because Gutenberg still is um, functionality. It's not styling necessarily per se. Um, good. What? Um, I would think so. I've used it on 2017, like on a testing site, and I've never had issues with it. Um, but I haven't used it extensively, so I can't tell you for sure. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the wide alignment, I'm not sure what the actual uh, CSS settings are for that, um, but by default, Gutenberg kind of restricts um, the blocks to, to a, a default kind of width, kind of a content width or whatever. Um, so when you align left, right, or center, and then when you do the wide align, it sets it to like, I think 80 or 90%. And um, then you can do full align and it's 100%. Um, and, but that's all still within the content container on your site. So it's not gonna go like outside the post field. Yeah. Right. Anybody else? Yep. That's a good question. Um, you shouldn't, but I don't know, honestly. Um, I'm not on the core Gutenberg team. I don't know how it would work on like a legacy site that's been around for a really long time that hasn't been touched in a while. That might and probably would need some special considerations. It won't need to be rebuilt for sure. I don't think there's an instance where it will need to be built from scratch unless there's just something horrendous in it already that's keeping it old. Um, for the most part, you should be able to update and if you have issues, for the foreseeable future, the Classic Editor plugin will be available, so you could always revert back that way. Um, yeah, and, and a good point that, came, that you made me think of, the Gutenberg Editor, um, I don't know if all of you are aware, most of you should be, because your sites were probably automatically updated to 4.9.2 uh, two days ago. And in that installation, if the user so this is something to consider if you have clients. If the user has the ability to edit plugins and Gutenberg is not installed or activated, they will receive a prompt to install and try Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Um, if it is installed but not activated, anyone who can edit posts will also receive that prompt. Anyone, so the new, or 492 adds a prompt, 498, sorry, I'm way off of my version numbers. 498 adds a prompt to try Gutenberg in the dashboard. So when you log in, it'll be like, hey, try Gutenberg. We've got this new thing, and it's really cool. Um, and that's a, that will be shown to anyone who can edit plugins, or like activate or deactivate plugins. Um, and if it's installed on the site already, it will be shown to be, act, like it'll say, hey, activate Gutenberg to anyone who can edit posts. But if your clients don't have the privileges of adding plugins, which a lot of people don't give them for I would think good reasons. Um, <laughs> and then you don't, have to you don't have to worry about it. But just so you know, that is out there. So a lot of people will be seeing it and asking questions. Okay. And I think that's all my time. So thanks, guys. This has been fun.